right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Dr. Risa Riger, who is, uh, where are you today? I forgot to ask you. I am in New York. New York, it was that's what just, I thought. We just had snow flurries, by the way. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, we didn't. We didn't have them here. <laughs> Although I will admit we did have two weeks of like uh, intense rain, which is very unusual for here. And, uh, yes. you know, coming from Ireland, I understand rain. Uh, Southern California people don't. And that's why you're better off staying off the roads when it rains in Southern California. There's a tip. <laughs> yes. Um, and and uh, Reese is clinical psychologist, international speaker, founder of 93% Consulting Advisory Council for Mindfulness Without Borders and the creator of Disruptive self-ownership. And what we're going to talk about today is using disruptive self-ownership in two, 2023. And, and uh, Arisa, as I always say, you know, I like to quote my, my compatriot, Oscar Wilde, who always said, like, be yourself because everybody else is taken. Mm -hmm. But it seems like nowadays people get kind of caught up in almost not trying to be themselves and trying to be so many other things. And we were just talking about this before we came on air. So um, maybe just uh, baseline this for us, what you mean by self-ownership? By self-ownership, what I mean is that we need to own every single aspect of who we are, the the wonderful, the good, the meh, the, and the cringeworthy. And when we're able to do all of that, we really bring all of ourselves into what we do. And whatever it is that we may have left behind or thought we have left behind may be exactly the kind of strength and skill that we need at this point in time. So we bring our awareness into updating and learning from our past experiences, understanding what we've left behind, and bring those pieces of ourselves into the presence present, which fortifies us and really empowers us in a very courageous and grounded way and speaking with authenticity. Yeah, and, and that's a great point because let's face it, uh, authenticity is a bit of a buzzword at the moment. Uh, I, I love it when people say, uh, you know, I'm going to teach you how to be more authentic and you're going, hmm, how does that work? Uh, but I think, you know, we live in such a distracted world. I think you said it earlier about being fragmented because we have so many distractions out there and so many things like, oh, if I was more like this person, if I was more like that online person, if I was more like this or whatever, I'd be, I would be more successful instead of sort of looking inwards and saying, well, I am actually accountable for where I am today. And once you get to that point, then things get a little bit more liberating. Absolutely. And the, the first piece of this, John, is to really look at and take a hard look and get clarity about what is your superpower? What is your expertise? Because there's something, even if you're selling a widget, and there are other people selling widgets, mm -hmm. there's something unique about you. And there's something that is specific to you that no one else has. And that's the piece that we need to really look at and get clarity about. Because once we have our idea and our belief, and we know this about what our superpower is, like what our area of expertise is, like I know that I'm an expert in change and I mm -hmm. help individuals, companies, and, um, and different kinds of establishments be able to embrace and work through change and innovation. And so you need to figure out what is your space and where is your superpower and really understanding what that does for you. And it sounds like a simple exercise, but actually it takes time because we can be so splintered and fragmented by bright, shiny object. And when we really hunker into ourselves and identify what is that for me? That's our first step of authenticity. Yeah, and uh, I mean, that's I totally agree with you. But I think that the challenge today is that people don't spend time with themselves. And I, I know I'm kind of repeating this. I say this over and over. But people don't spend time with themselves. They're always distracted by their phone, by something, shiny objects, whatever. 
And that's, and for me, that's a real starting point for people. That, people have to spend, you have to spend some time with yourself or else you're never going to really understand who you are, your purpose, what your superpower is, right? Absolutely. And also, look, no matter what you're doing, there's some aspect of, of interpersonal communication that goes sure. on, right? There's some way that of connecting, and if you're uncomfortable spending time with yourself and getting clarity about who you are and where your expertise is, that is absolutely 100% going to translate into your communications and your interactions with others. And one spot to begin with is the authenticity, is that you need to know and get comfortable and identify and really own, have ownership over your expertise. And that's step one. And when you do that, when you have when you have ownership and you understand your expertise, I call it up your act, up your authenticity, your credibility, and your trust. So first step is being authentic and you have to be authentic with you. And the second piece is then it helps you with your credibility. And that's so crucial because people know when you're being credible or not. And when you're the expert in your area, you bring credibility with you. You're not, you're not going into some area where you really know nothing and you think that you have to kind of tap dance into the space because people are going to feel that. Yeah, and, and part of that is once you discover that, obviously, Risa, is that you need to invest time and energy in, in really making that the best it could be your area of expertise your superpower and i think sometimes we we sit around waiting for other people to do it for us like people often sit in companies waiting like say well i don't get any training on this they haven't done any of this and i always think is like why are you waiting like invest in your invest in yourself and the more you invest in yourself the more valuable more credible the more authentic you're going to become absolutely and the, the credibility is so important because we know, we know when people are trying to gloss over something inside of ourselves from a, from a neurological, from a neurodevelopmental and neuroscience perspective, we have something in ourselves. We have an internal kind of um, BS meter. And, mm -hmm. and we may not know the specifics, but I'm sure you've had the experience. I'm sure everybody listening has had the experience of talking with someone and there's just something that isn't lining up. There's just something that you're getting that feeling in your gut, in your head, in your shoulders, wherever it may be, that there's something off. There's something that isn't credible or isn't authentic. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with you. And I think that's when you can almost immediately, you can you can tell that the person doesn't actually believe what they're saying, uh, they're saying to you. And and again, that's why I, I think it's so, so important. And I think to your point about our BS meter, I think it's actually even more heightened after COVID, after all the all the stuff that's gone on in the world. I think people are way more kind of tuned in and a little bit more cynical and suspicious than they were before. So uh, you can't, I really don't think you can get away anymore with with trying to be somebody you're not. And I go back to, to Mr. Wilde, like, you know, I mean, be yourself. Well, also when you're not being yourself, what is that communicating to other people? Mm-hmm that there's an inadequacy, there's a discomfort, you don't have the confidence to be yourself. And confidence, confidence that's grounded in reality versus like, oh, I'm just great, you know, <laughs> versus really having that expertise, developing that, investing in yourself, taking that deep look inside, that that translates very powerfully and really brings you to one of the pieces of up your act, authenticity, credibility, and trust, which is that if you're trying to fool yourself, right, you're not trusting yourself. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think that's an excellent, excellent point. And if you look at it uh, in, in mm -hmm. if you look at it in the in the world of sports, right? I mean, you see. Obviously, sport, elite sports people, you know, they go through their visualizations. I'm big into martial arts, not what UFC and all that. But you see people visualizing their win and what they're going to do and all of this stuff. But that's only after, that's part of 
they've done all the preparation, they've invested, they've trained, they've tried to be the best that they can be. And as you say, just sort of visualizing, well, I'm going to win. You're, if you haven't put in the work, no, you're probably not. <laughs> no, you're, you're not. You're not. And why, why could you? Because mm -hmm. people are really taking the time for development and being grounded and really becoming that expert. And that when you're truly an expert, that trust factor comes across so strongly because you don't have to be more than, than what you are. You don't have to oversell. You can tell someone, you know, I don't, I don't know, but let me find out about that for you. Or that's a great question. Let me get back to you on that. And that's how one of the ways that you develop trust and that you're not in the oversell position. Yeah, no, I, I love that you brought that up because I, I actually find that that's one of the greatest uh, validators of credibility is if, if for me personally, if I'm ever dealing with an expert and <laughs> and they literally say that they you ask them something and they go, hmm, I don't know. the I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I'll look into that. For me, that's a huge credibility builder because it, you can tell when somebody goes, oh, well, that's blah, blah, blah. And they're going off and you know, it, you know, it, they don't know what they're talking about. Yes. And that that one of the ways that we impart our energy to people is by having that self-confidence. And so there is you don't have to be frenetic. You don't have to fumfer. And you can really be clear. And really, there's one thing that keeps our liveliness and our energy up, which has to do with true curiosity and true mm -hmm. intellectual curiosity. And if you start every day with the, with the intent and with the hope that you're going to learn something, right? And you never know where you're going to learn it from. I mean, it's you could learn it from an expert. You can learn it from some, mm -hmm. somebody who's giving you a cup of coffee. It can come from all different places, but if you come into each and every day with an idea that you're open and curious about learning, that's really going to come across and it's going to help you in your work. Yeah, and I think not only that, Teresa, I think that models behavior for other people then. So you're influenced the community around you and the people that you interact with, which I think is an incredibly powerful thing. Because I think sometimes people focus so much on on macro and global I issues and things that they have no control over. And they don't realize that by modeling the right kind of behavior in their environment, they're actually having more of an impact than just pontificating about uh, <laughs> things that they have no control over. Communication starts with you. It's from, it's from the inside out and the outside in. And you need to have ownership of your inside because that's where everything is, you know, everything is emanating from. And that ownership will help you in making connection, really developing relationship, because look, we know that relationship is everything. Mm -hmm. Relationship is what makes you, <clears throat> pardon me, the go-to person. And so when somebody's thinking about, I need this or I need that, that you're the person that they go to, you're top of mind. And these are the ways that you get to be top of mind. And what I call this is integrated communication. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean that not only are words match up, that's what's coming out of us that people hear, but what comes with the words, which has to do of all the nonverbal communication, our body language, our tone of voice, our eye contact, our body mm -hmm. posture, and that when our words and our nonverbal communication match up and, and are integrated, that is an enormously powerful communication that speaks truth, that, street, that speaks authenticity, credibility, and trust, and has power. That's your impact. Yeah. And it's funny you say that because, I mean, those are things you can't hide. I mean, have you ever seen somebody and you said, uh, oh, are you enjoying yourself? And they're going, oh, yeah, I am. And you sort of say, well, you might want to tell your face because. It's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, <Doc>, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. But my point being, obviously, as you said, I mean, it's 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 all encompassing. And just just one other thing I wanted to touch on is uh 
people do, you know, can do this work uh, and on all of that and get themselves ready and be excited to like self ownership and go and be the best they can be and be the expert. And then that horrible little imposter, little devil steps up on their shoulders and, and tries to undo them. Um, how, how can people uh, reduce Because you can never get rid of that completely, I think. But I mean, how can people reduce the power of the little uh, um, imposter syndrome devil? Oh, John, that is a whole topic. That's something that I have, I'm enormously passionate about. And um, I don't think I could give you a little snippet other than uh, imposter syndrome can absolutely be addressed and absolutely and absolutely can be addressed in really a powerful way because that has to do with the mindset and building a different orientation of thinking. And that's something I wind up doing all the time with people. The- so yes. it's it's um it you know I, I, maybe we'll you'll come back maybe we'll talk about that in depth uh, at, and at another time because uh, I think it's a really incre- it's a incredibly important important piece and I think the the other thing uh, Risa is to do all of this is you have to kind of understand your purpose like why you're doing what you're doing because I think that's another thing that a lot of people overlook and then they don't realize why why are they unhappy or why are they discontented because they've never figured out their purpose like even your purpose for what is your purpose for work is it just to make money is it just to support your family whatever it is have you ever thought about what your real purpose is or is your purpose something that you feel obligated that somebody else you know that you've basically taken from society and said well these are my obligations so that's my purpose that would be that would really be an on you know a sad place to be because we need to be able to when we're talking about purpose when we're talking about success and it's we're not necessarily talking about monetary success Mm -hmm. that you need to drill down and understand and not be pulled and pushed and taken and hijacked by different ideas but really understanding in purpose with purpose and clarity about purpose, that brings you to your own success and what success mm-hmm. is for you. There are no there are no ultimate standards of success that you really need to look into yourself, understand your purpose, understand your expertise, understand all of these aspects about yourself. And that when you have purpose, that's the engine that drives you. And the other thing is that No matter what, we are built for change. Our brains are built for change. And positive change can happen at any point in time. It is never too late. You are not too old. It's always the time to bring positive change into your life and really leverage your neuroplasticity. No, absolutely. And and I love what you said there, because I think that's the other part of, uh, of all of this, you know, purpose is your, your, your idea or your personal definition of success. And I think too often we take other people's definitions or we think, oh, well, success means I'm promoted at work, whatever it is, instead of saying, is that, is that success for me? Uh, is success on a broader scale? Are there other things that are, I measure success by? But I think that's another part that we don't spend enough time figuring out what success looks like for us personally, as opposed to maybe what we think is expected of us. There's somebody I was working with who was really feeling kind of down about where they were on their ladder in their, in their work. And we sat down together and we talked about, well, what do you feel is missing? What are the important components of your life? And when we looked at it and really got away from just titles, that it turned out that this person didn't realize that they had actually created and crafted the components of life and what's important to them to be able to really be in their success and really live their purpose. And that we can have a purpose at work, we can have a purpose in our personal relationships, a purpose in our relationship with ourselves. And there are all these delineations that are important for us to come together to integrate within ourselves and really be able to tease out what is it that stimulates me, that brings me joy, that, that gives me that kind of inquisitiveness or the challenge that I love, 
or the ways that I can be able to anticipate what's going to happen every day. We, there, there isn't one, it's not one size fits all. Life isn't one size fits all. And life is about figuring out what it is for you, what's right for you, and how you develop that. And which is one of the things when I'm working with people that we really look at in very real ways and help them to implement. Because just yeah. staying an idea versus, you know, you need the idea and you need all of that, but you also need to take the steps to implement. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think sometimes we're always great at uh, coming up with the ideas and then forgetting that hey, they actually have to be implemented. And that's where the fun really starts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Risa, this has been fantastic as usual. Uh, all of Dr. Risa's information will be below this uh, video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Thanks so much. I, I do uh, workshops and I consult with individuals, businesses, and with institutions to help them really bring the change that they want to be able to implement change to help everything grow from personal growth to business growth and what that looks like on the ground in real and true ways. Yeah, fantastic. And I would really highly recommend people to go check out the work. It's uh, it's really important. Hey, and we said 2023 self-ownership. Come on, get to uh, own yourself and maybe have the best year you've ever had and set yourself up for. The, and as you said, uh, Dr. Risa, which I like is this isn't a young person, middle aged, old person. This is just a person thing. So regardless of where you are in your life, uh, it's never it's never too late to uh, to get started on your journey of self-ownership. Thank you so much, John. What a pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure is all mine. And thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again very soon.